what is on tap in this episode of Cougar's Corner. We have a Mountaineer legend amongst us, folks. We are going to be joined today by Dell, the Wolfman Wolfley. I'm very honored to have him as a guest here on Cougar's Corner. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let Mr. Wolfley and I serve you up a shot of top shelf college football content. What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome in to another episode of Coos's Corner. Pull that chair up, and not only am I going to serve you up one shot of content, tonight you're getting a double because I'm joined by the one and only Dale, the Wolfman Wolfley. What's going on, Wolfman? Hey, how are we doing this evening, this fine, fine evening, an evening before the backyard brawl coming up here pretty shortly? Mm. Absolutely, man. And I was telling somebody a couple of days ago, man, I've already got butterflies in my stomach and we still got four days to go before the game starts. What am I going to do for these next four days? So I'm pumped up. I kind of regret not getting tickets for the game, but I will be on my couch. I will be cheering on the Mountaineers loud and proud. I'll have my, hopefully some ribs or something good to eat at my table and ready to go. Well, you better have something good there, Coos, because I'll tell you what, it takes a mighty appetite to knock off the Pittsburgh Panthers, and we need everybody you know, pulling on that rope. I don't care if you're at the stadium. I don't care if you're at your couch. It doesn't matter. It's We're all Mountaineer Nation. We're all pulling. We're watching on TV, and all we want to do is see our boys go out there on that field and make the backyard up in Pittsburgh their backyard. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, what I want to talk about first is I know where you're going to be the day of the game, and I want you to talk about your Mountaineer Legends pregame show that you're going to be doing. So go go for it. I'll let you, I'll let you roll with it. Okay. Well, listen, it is going to be really fantastic, and not because I'm one of the hosts, okay? Uh, not because of that, because of all the people that are joining me. Now, it is called Mountaineer Legends pregame with Wolfman and Big Bad Ugly. No, not really ugly, but Brian Jilzwiak. And uh, we have so many great legendary Mountaineers coming in uh, for this pregame broadcast that actually is going to go throughout the entire season at different locations. Of course, the first one is in Pittsburgh, the Pit Stop for the Pit Panthers. And starting off, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I'll forget them. So i I'm just going to name a few, but there are over, are over 50 Mountaineer former football players coming into the Mountaineer Legends pregame, so much so that on Wednesday at 6.30, we're going live just to tell Mountaineer stories from Mountaineers. And the legend, the uh, Mountaineer Legends pregame is Thursday, September 1st, the day of the game, and it's from 2, we're saying 4 o'clock. And who knows how long it's going to go. I could cut it off at 3 o'clock. I could be so fired up and ready to go. But regardless, is that we're going to have legends now. What legends? Well, how about Daryl Talley? How about Major Harris? So how about those two right there where their numbers were permanently retired? There's only five that had ever happened in 130 years, including this year, 130 years of Mountaineer football. Only five. We have two of them. Not to match it. How about Mark Bulger, Aaron Beasley, Mike Logan? <laughs> Are you kidding me? We have decade after decade after decade of representatives uh, coming in. It is going to be absolutely fantastic. Oh, did Rasheed Marshall just knock on the door? Yeah, Rasheed Marshall. You got Bulger, Marshall, uh, Major? Who are we missing, man? I'll oh, tell man. you what. I mean, think about this. You got Donnie Barkley says, hey, I'm a little hungry, man. I want to come over to my religious <laughs> pregame and get some food. Well, hey, Donnie, you come on down, man. And, you know, you think about this. And we think about Chuck Smith. I think he was actually the defensive MVP from the 75 team uh, uh, when they beat the Panthers 17 to 14. Say, Chuck, he's a little hungry, I think. He's coming down. Maybe he'll get himself a soda there. But it's going to be over 50 Mountaineers Wednesday night. Thursday night. Like I said, we're going live on, on Wednesday because there's so many coming. Uh, oh, there's Big Vern Howard, man. Like, did you ever see Big Vern? He's almost as big as Johnny Ray. Oh, Johnny Ray. I don't even know if we could fit him in the restaurant. He's 400 pounds. 
We're crying out loud. It just keeps coming. It was that legend after legend after legend. I get, I get calls from people that are saying, hey, Wolf, what about me? And I'm like, what about you? Come on down. We're calling all Mountaineers, man. The more we're the all, merrier, right? We're all saying it. We're all legends, man, because then we played for the WVU. That's what we played Absolutely. for. That's what we represented. And we wanted our gang together. What does it say? There's none to fear. The gang's all here. So hail West Virginia, hail. And that's Absolutely. exactly what's coming because the Pit Panthers, the Backyard Brawl, and I'm not talking about BYB and bring your own beer. This is the Backyard Brawl, man. And it doesn't get any, any greater opportunity than right here, right Thursday night. What a cast What a cast of characters, man. What a legendary group of guys. I mean, I'm missing some. I'm telling you. I'm oh, I know. Some. I mean, Stebbin Bailey, I think. Didn't you say Stebbin oh, Bailey's Stephen planning Bailey. to be there? He said, sorry, Stead. Well, I mean, you can't name them all. You know, oh, like you said, there's so man. many of them. It's, I'll but, tell you what, it's good stuff. But I, you know what, man? It, they're all, all fantastic. They're all brothers, and I, I couldn't have a better group of fellas that will all stick together and rooting for this team. We're not just a whole bunch of old cronies that you know we sit there and we talk about the old days. We are here for our guys now. Our guys, now, we want them to win. We want them to understand what it means to be a Mountaineer. What are the standards of being a Mountaineer? And when you talk about standards and you talk about the Pittsburgh Panthers, man, we got some, and we want to dish it out and dish it out hard and dish Absolutely. out a little bit, maybe even a, a, a bloody knuckles reference. <laughs> but we're going to have this pregame, and it's going to be bloody knuckles, and it's going to be fun. But we're actually going to break it down. We're going to actually try to break it down. Now, there's so many that are coming, and I've got to like, try to two nights, get them, or a night and a day, try to get them on, make sure they all get to open up their mouths. Because you know what they love to do, man? Oh, Just yeah. like in the football field. They want to yap, right? They, they want to talk yap. smack, too, probably. Don't they? Talk smack. And I did, too. So I'm, I'm no different than they are. And I know that they want a chance and opportunity to support the Mountaineers. And that's what we're doing with this whole – uh, pre-game. It is about our guys for Mountaineer Nation. Our guys, Mountaineer Nation. And the alumni, the alumni has not been represented well enough, uh, in my opinion. And I was the alumni guy for mm -hmm. almost 15 years at WVU. And this is our push. We're, we're making it. And we're extremely excited about the opportunities coming up for the Mountaineer Legends, the pre-game. Mountaineer Legends doing a lot of things. Getting a, really involved in the Mountaineer nation community yes that's great man that's gonna be a great time i can tell you're fired up man i, to, I encourage everybody to tune into this this is going to be what a tune up for the game right i mean how if you want to get fired up for the backyard brawl you tune into this i guarantee you wolfman and big joes and who by the way i've also had the pleasure of having on my show and stead bailey and oh my gosh man major harris i, I mean does it get any larger than major harris in west virginia football legends you know what? History. You, well, you know, Pat White could be there around the corner too, but obviously he's out in San Diego, so oh, we couldn't yeah, get I mean, out here. But, you know, there's some other guys that have said that they're – oh, I forgot. I know there's another quarterback. Oliver Luck is coming. So, uh, Ollie, man, <laughs> I put out – I had to dig up film on Ollie from the 81 Peach Bowl, <laughs> and I'm telling you what, you know what? Film sucked. Back in 1981, because you know, that YouTube channel, you're digging that stuff oh, out. Dude. I don't know. They're playing the Florida Gators. He makes an incredible throw uh, inside the red zone, probably about I'd say the eight yard line. But he has to run back to the right on a, a bootleg because he gets forced out on the blitz, and he makes an incredible, incredible throw to Vicky Walzak, mm. where he gets his heel in the end zone, and that's it. And it was an incredible throw, incredible catch. Uh, but I had to go back to 1981. I don't even know you weren't even alive then, Coos. I was. I was a year old. I was alive, <laughs> barely, barely. But I was here. Oh my hey, goodness! Speaking of Oliver Luck, I didn't have this on the agenda, but it brought it to my. You brought it to mind, and I wanted to ask you. I want to pick your brain and see if you know the answer to this trivia, and if it's even accurate, because this is this is a stat that I found online the other day that I find it amazing. I was looking doing research for another video, and I was looking through West Virginia all-time stats. And I found one on number of times sacked by quarterbacks. Oliver, it says Oliver Luck only got sacked one time in his entire career. 
<laughs> well, you know, they didn't throw the ball very often back then. Well, that's that's true, <laughs> but one time it, it wasn't was like the air years. raid at Don Neal in 1981. Or the Frank Signetti <laughs> era. It was not the air raid, okay? Yeah, but it one time in four years is still pretty remarkable. I, well, it opinion. is. Well, I think he just didn't want to get hit. You know, <laughs> I, I don't think he liked I him, want you to ask him about that. Defensive lineman, linebackers. I, you know what? I might ask him that. If I remember now, I'm not going to promise you anything. Because this has been yeah. bashed a few times. And sometimes that memory just doesn't kick in like it, it always used to. Uh, but I will, I will definitely uh, approach him if I remember. Yeah. I think number one on that list, and this is not really surprising, was I think Geno Smith may have been number one, but my God, how many times did Geno Smith drop back? I mean, so well, I'm always that's, yeah, that's now a pretty you're obvious at repetitions and and going right. in there and saying, "Wow, right. you, you know, yes. wow." You know, that's why you stats think? can be deceiving sometimes because it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad all the time. It just means right. I mean, he had more opportunities to get sacked, so it's obviously going to be a much higher number. Oh, absolutely, and you know what? Stats can be so. So misleading at times. Mm -hmm. Other times they oh, yeah. nail it, uh, and other times they could be misleading. It's all about the way it's used. And I can show you stats going this way. I show you going that way, up and down, left and right, you know, north and south. It doesn't matter. Uh, but regardless, is that now you just said Gino, man. How about that, huh? Gino starting for the season. Yes. Seattle. Finally getting his opportunity. And I hope, man, I hope he balls out. Yes. Gino Smith, man. Oh, that, that is awesome. I was actually looking at the Orange Bowl highlights the other day, and I thought, wow, between Stedman and, and Tavon, uh, what an incredible, incredible uh, game that was offensively. This play and Gino was uh, super fantastic. Not to get Absolutely. you off track. Go ahead. Get back no, up. that's fine. That's fine. Real quick, do you want to touch on your Wolfman's Call channel as well? Oh, the Wolfman's call is turning into this daily output of me about what I'm thinking about uh, with the team and, and breaking it down. You know, I love to watch and break down the film. That's all I do. Right. Like, I, I am a coach at heart. I used to be a coach, retired from that. But now what I just I got to get into with the, the whole broadcasting thing I've been doing for the past 10 years. So I got to watch film. I got to watch it all. Retape it. See who's doing what. See if that offensive line is blocking. See if those defensive linemen are doing the right techniques. What about their height? What about their pad level? How about those running backs? Not only can they run the ball, are they blocking those blitzes? Are they doing what they're supposed to do with the fakes? Uh, you know, defensive secondary, they're, they're young now, right? So are they understanding what the assignments are? Are they able to go in disguise because they're young, at least in the system, even though they might be older in other systems, but they still, again, are learning a new defensive system. And are they making that disguise? Are they going to be able to take Keaton Slovis there and show him and get him fooled about what they're actually doing? It's all these things that you got to see. And you can only get that off of the, watching the film or watching the replay of a football game. It, it doesn't, you know, you don't have to have this high-tech film. You can just copy the the TV in and look it down and say, what's going on? Look at those small increases. What are they doing? Because you're doing the little small things right. Usually it means that a team offensively, defensively, and special teams are doing the big things right. right. Do those small things. Those win you the games. Absolutely. Speaking of, speaking of breaking down film, have you had a chance to watch JT Daniels yet? I have. I watched JT Daniels and I've watched him uh, on film from way back at USC to Georgia uh, to recently. And I'll tell you what, he's got the gift. He has the gift. And, and whatever you hear right now about JT Daniels and uh, uh, Graham here, I, I hear a lot in, in, from Neil Brown and is how smart he is, mm -hmm. how intelligent he is, how mature he is. He is. I think Graham just spoke the other day at his press conference. He talked about he was mature when he came in. He came in a year early to USC out of high school, came in a year earlier, and he was so mature back then, and now he's even grown even more. Well, that's really good news because what are the offenses now? Because you know, man, mm -hmm. that they are all predicated on the fact that the quarterback has to make the right decisions. To put him right. in there, you know, you could do a run pass option, you can do a check with me, okay, or you can just call a plain out loud gun audible. Green, green is what we used to say. Mm -hmm. Green, green. When Major called that out, oh crap. Because I was getting ready to pull, right? That's what always happened. I was getting ready to pull as an offensive lineman in a three-point stance, and all of a sudden major would go green, green, 45, green, 45. You know what that meant? I had to go straight forward now, and all the way my weight was back on my can. 
Right. So now I had to get my way back, shifted in my stance without the defensive lineman noticing it. Right. So it was like, oh, geez. So green, green, 45, I don't know. But the quarterback has to make the right decisions, and that takes the brains, something a lot more than what I could probably have done back in the day. So having JT in that spot, you know, Will Greer is the same thing. Clint Trickett. Mm-hmm. You know how smart Clint Trickett is? Oh, yeah. I mean, my goodness, it goes back. People are like, you know, you know, Skylar Howard, he was smart. He was smart. All these guys, and if you got to be smart, especially nowadays with the quarterback putting the offense in the best position mm-hmm. that has success. Absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've heard nothing but great things. I mean, I think uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton said that he throws the most catchable deep ball he's ever seen, if I, if I got the quote right. In his well, I'm going to tell you, because you, you know what? He better catch the dang ball then. Or some fans are going to be doing hey, this at him. Yeah, you, uh, you got that right. Yeah, I think he will. Though. I got, I got all the faith in the world in BFW this year, man. I think he's going to, I think he's going to have a breakout. Not, not really breakout for us because we know what he's capable of. But I think he's one of those. A little more that, consistency. Yeah, consistency, and I think he's going to show the nation what he's capable of doing. Well. Uh, yeah, we need I to think see a few things. I, I think a few. Th- I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, I keep, no, I'm done. Go ahead. All right. Well, a few things. I think Bryce Ford Wheaton is uh, number one. He comes from a, a lineage with the Fords, mm-hmm. right? So uh, right. Coach Ford was my hero, uh, my guy at the at WVU. Love him to death. Um, and then you got Garrett. I blocked for his uh, uncle. And then Tracy. I knew she was a track runner uh, during college at the time. So he comes from a lineage of athletes. Okay, right. that's number one. Number two is, you know, you see that he has he's shown spectacular catches at times. We're going back to I'll go back to the Kansas State uh, mm-hmm. uh, three years ago or two years. I can't remember what year it was. Making some great catches down the sidelines mm-hmm. at the end, showing that showing that flash, and right. then it got a little more. And then they're talking about the, dropping some balls, but it got better. And last year he had a solid season, over 500 yards receiving, and. I, I think that he's ready to make that move. And I'm going to tell you something else. I said this to I said this to him. I said in the podcast, the Country Roads Trust podcast, I said, when you want to be you and you want to dominate, you can dominate. You have to have that mindset all the time because you can dominate all the time. He looks like a freaking statue of, of steel. I mean, he he's just – it's unbelievable how great – how great he is physically yeah. and what he can do is no defensive backs in college can consistently compete with him when he says, I don't want you to compete. I'm telling you right now, mm-hmm. that's how good he can be because physically at six foot three, 220 pounds, fast as he is athletic as he is, he just needs to go out there. It's the mind. And I think, it's all turning and clicking, and guess what else is coming around? Oh, what's that next level, man? Are you tell me, mm-hmm. I'm, they say I got some talent, and if I show this talent, also I might get paid, right? right. I mean, so again, yeah. all these things are working as they should. That's not being selfish or anything. That's no. just being like that's the next level. It's that's the game. evolution step. That's what yep. you have to do. So, w- w- with being saying that, is that he he's making the right decisions and he's maturing. And when you put that maturity with the skill, and it doesn't matter when it comes, it comes a little bit later, a little bit earlier, whatever it does, the two match up. That's when the light bulb goes on and you're like, ding, ding, ding. I can be here. And now I want to go do good. And I think he's really at that level. And he's made the steps and the work, put in the work to get there. And now, yeah. now he's got a five, a former five-star quarterback that has done nothing but won seven and zero in the SEC who's got a 70% completion percentage, career, 68, I don't know what it is, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so he's right up there, he's accurate, and he's got apparently the easiest long ball to catch. Okay. Let's go, man. Listen, we got some big, big inspiration going on. I want to see it come out right at uh, the pit game. Let's go. Let's go for the long Let's ball. Do it, man. First play of the game. I love it. Man. Boom. 50-yard chunk, <laughs> chunk play. Man, I'll tell strike. you what, strike, strike. <laughs> hey, real quick, another thing. We talked about JT. We talked about BFW. Who is another? Who is one player that maybe nobody's talking about that you think 
is going to shock some people in the 2022 season for the Mountaineers. I can't say that nobody's talking about him. Uh, nationally, nationally, maybe would be a well, better. Even still nationally, because I, you know, Phil Steele had him as, oh, somewhere in the Big 12 first or second team. I, I can't okay. remember. But what I want to say is what's going to shock people that sh- shocked me. Mm-hmm. Shocked me. No, no, surprised me. That's a better word because I'm the wolf, but I don't get shocked. Okay, that's number <laughs> that's number one. Number two is I got you. That uh Wyatt Milam. Okay, at left tackle. Mm-hmm. I see him. I've seen how much he's 311 pounds. He's so much stronger. I'm watching everything he does is NFL stamped on his forehead. Now I don't want to get the kid, I don't want to say anything. But I hope he's not listening. He doesn't even care what I say. It doesn't matter. Okay. But watch him at left. Up. He doesn't do anything wrong maneuvering. He does not. He is his technique, his pad level, as big as he is, mm-hmm. he is bent knees. He is right there. This cat is, I'm telling you, from his, he's a sophomore, man. This kid is a sophomore. He's had one season. Mm-hmm. And he didn't start at the beginning of the season. He was still a little too much of a rookie. Still too, still too light in the can. Mm-hmm. Still too light in the strength department, right? With those bench presses and squats and power cleans. But he's not now. In fact, I even said I can't call him a young pup anymore because I want to call him a young sir. Because I'm telling you right now, this guy at left tackle looks as good and 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 secure and confident in his movement. And I'm talking this this guy has got a world of potential. But I'm just so surprised from last year where he was just starting to really start to pick it up, right? Especially at the end, to where he's advanced to right now. I called this and I said this will be one of the best offensive lines in the Big 12. I, I called it out. That was the Wolfman's call. That's what we did, man. And what's yeah. what we did, the call. And when I say that, I'm talking about all five of them. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, Brandon Yates, man, you know, I heard that Coach Moore say, hey, you know, he's a little more finesse than he is physical. And, mm-hmm. and that was an issue. So I want to see Brent because I know he is capable. I've watched this young man. I know that he is totally capable of taking that position and being physical, but he's got to want to do it, and nobody can do it for him. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's that got some of the fan base a little bit nervous, uh, to be honest. I've seen a lot of chatter on Twitter about it. Uh, well, you know, you can be honest all you, or nervous and all that, but the thing is is that if he's not at that level or Jaquay Hubbard is taking over, or if they take uh, uh, Nestor and move him out to tackle, mm-hmm. because there's other options now. Right. If they do that, well, then they have to do that to make the best five out there at a time. Yep. And, of course, now the tight end's got to come into that uh, perspective there as well and viewing on that performance. Paul and Day, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, now you got what? My my guy, man, Michael O'Loughlin. Yes. Uh, you know, in front of apostrophe and then an L. He's got a <laughs> Irishman. I love him already. O'Loughlin, that tight end. If anybody follows me, they know how much I think that the tight end – is the most underused, underutilized position in college football, not mm. the NFL. I think who covers the tight end in college football? I, I haven't seen it consistently yet. The right. tight end down vertical, down the seam, man. You know what the seam is, right? Straight on down where they go mm-hmm. from the and between the safety and the corner, mm-hmm. right on down there. That's why I call it the seam, right? Yeah. Hit that shot, man. Hit that tight end doing crossing routes. The tight end is open. Make sure you look for him, JT Daniels. Yeah. And I th- I'm excited about Mike O. I was glad to hear he's coming back because I was I – mean, he's a big he – was, he was coming on last year to be a really big piece of our offense, I thought. And then when he went down, I'm, I think it really changed the complexion of our offense, to be honest with you. Uh, I've said it for last year. I said, you know, healthy, he's one of the best tight ends in the Big 12. Yeah. 6'5", 255. Uh, I think it's Glenn Allen, uh, Illinois, or something like that. I get I get all kinds of shots from his people at home because I'm such <laughs> a, a Laughlin. Oh, Pachby L. <laughs> Laughlin, right? I mean, he's so – it's like, I'm like, this guy, use him. Use him. But you got to be healthy to use him. So, right. you know, and you got to be healthy. And 
uh, do what you can. But I, I think that they got an eye out for him. You heard uh, Neil talk about that a little bit in his press conference mm-hmm. about having him back and what a pleasure it is. And, and uh, Paul and Dave, now he did some things in the spring and, and a little bit of fall camp. So he might surprise you with a good catch every now and then instead of just being a, a run blocker like I was all the time, just a grunter. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm, I, th- I think that was an underrated pickup in the offseason, to be honest with you, because if they do struggle any on that right side of the line, he they can bring him in to sure that up. Yeah, well. I, I I like that. I like a tight end sticking in. I like a, a running back and a chip. Anything you can do to slow down, especially in a second or third and long, mm-hmm. uh, where you know that defensive end or outside backer or safety is just pinning their ears back and coming after the quarterback. And I think that's when you have to really uh, be careful about what you're doing. Maybe moving the pocket around a little bit more, uh, you know, moving it away from the tackle spot. Whatever you got to do is move the pocket, play action pass, keep them off their feet. You got to establish a run because that's the best way to keep them, you know, a little bit back because they got to protect the run first. And if you could do that, then you can keep that defensive lineman so he's not just teeing off all the time. Because what happens is, Yes, you get the run stuffed, just what happened the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, what are you gonna do? You're one dimensional. Now you gotta throw the ball. We know you gotta throw the ball. I'm pinning my ears back and I'm coming. Right. And that's usually been proved to be troublesome for the Mountaineers the past two years. Yeah. Well, hopefully, and, and this defensive line they're facing Thursday night is no is, is no joke, man. Well, it's no joke. I mean, yeah. I, I got the too deep right here. But you take a look at these guys. You got David Green over there, 6'1", 280, you know, as a defensive tackle, defense, defensive end. You got uh, Bondonato, 6'5", 260. Man, I mean, yeah. you know, they got – they had 54 sacks. I know. Last year, 54. And our offensive line, I believe, gave up like 40. Okay. Right. So, again, now our offensive line is – I've said it. I went out there and I said, listen, I think you guys a year together under Zach Frazier's leadership – and I think I, I've seen it. They're more physical. They all talked about, we got to be more physical. Got to be more physical. Well, they talked about it. They've talked it. Now they're walking it. And now they better walk it in the game. Because this defensive line right here is going to show you this war that's going to happen mm-hmm. in the box. You know what the box is, right, Coos? The Absolutely. Box is yes. right there. And I, I'm going to say this. I got this from my brother, Ronnie. The box is like a bar. Okay, and then when you get in the box there between the, the, the running backs, the tight end, the tight end, the imaginary tight end, if it's mm-hmm. okay, then you get the defensive line, the linebackers, right? Maybe a safety slips up to there in the box, whatever right. is the box, like a bar room. And then there's a bar room brawl. Okay, right. and, and everything goes on in the box, all kinds of chaos. But you know what comes out of the box? The last person standing or the last team standing. And that's forcing your will. And that's who wins the bar room brawl. Okay, because that's what the box is, and that's the trenches, and that is what this game is all about. Yes. You can take the quarterbacks, do all you want with that, but it's going to be about the trenches, O-line, the D-line, strength on strength. Their O-line, our D-line, strength on strength. And then what happens through there? Through the will, the attrition of the box and the battling, you're going to get the big plays Mm -hmm. because that's when they pop it over top. And if you think about it with uh, Signetti, man, I'll tell you, I was at the staff back then when he was uh, OC the last time he was at Pitt. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, this guy's going to do He's going to run the ball. He's NFL. He's got 11 personnel, 12 personnel. He's got 21 personnel. He'll even go 22 in short yardage. You know, two big backs, you know, two tight ends going pound, 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 mm-hmm. and he's going to go over the top. He's going to pound, 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 over the top. All right. that is the attrition, and that's exactly – the way Signetti runs it. That's what he did at Boston College. That's what uh, he did back in Pitt. That's what he's done for 32 years in the NFL and college. I mean, yeah. it's it's really, uh, you know, hey, and if, we, if they get a turnover on us, watch out. They're taking a shot. If they're inside the 50-yard line, they're mm-hmm. taking a shot for the end zone. It, it's almost like clockwork. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh... – that's the reason Narduzzi wanted to bring him in because Narduzzi wasn't happy with Whipple and how Whipple wanted to throw the ball all the time. He wanted somebody with more balance. But, I mean, it worked, so I don't know why he was complaining. But uh, 
Well, that's because you got a Kenny Pickett. I mean, exactly. You know, honestly, uh, you know, Kenny Pickett is. I was I was watching his film, and I didn't know how good he was until I actually watched his film. And obviously, mm-hmm. I think he's showing up with the Steelers right now. Uh, his capabilities mm-hmm. and his his actual his coolness on the field. I mean, now he, obviously he's been playing on that field in Pittsburgh for right. a few years now. But he really, in the Steelers, he's he shown me a lot. And I talked to my brother Craig about that. It was the Steelers radio guy, color guy. And I think they're all a little surprised that his leadership and his poise out there in the pocket, uh, running the offense, you know, knowing the, the defense, uh, being able to make checks. I think they're surprised at where he's at right now. So uh, good for Kenny. That's good for the Steelers people. Uh, getting back to, you, you know, looking at what, you know, the, the pit offense is with Whipple. Narduzzi just wants to run the ball. He's an old school. I'll tell you, this guy really is an old school coach. I think Signetti fits exactly into what mm-hmm. he wants to do. Multiple personnel, pound it, pound it, throw the ball, pound it, pound it, pound it. And you know what? They use a lot of tight ends. Now, yeah. watching that with Pitt, you know, they got Bartholomew there. Yes, he's he a freshman me. All-American yeah. tight end. Big City, he's 6'5", 255. Mm. Just like who? Mr. O. Pachviel. <laughs> okay, just the same thing. And he's he's actually pretty athletic. Uh, he's not as tough as Laughlin is, though, in block. I'll tell you, he's yeah. only a sophomore, so right. I'll give him that. But I think he's going to be pretty special, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, he's uh, one of my preview episodes I did with a, with a Pitt fan. He was the the guy asked me the host asked me what was the one player on Pitt that worried me the most and he was the one I picked because I've just seen so many times over the years not even not just at West Virginia but like you mentioned earlier tight I've seen so many tight ends win football games for their team because nobody can cover them uh, but that that being said I think we've got some guys that can cover him oh, but I, he does worry I, me a little I do bit too. Now, okay, so you want the breakdown in the secondary because I can see you're begging for it. Yes, okay, yes, go secondary. ahead. All right, so we're looking at a whole bunch of transfers here, right? And my question is, okay, so Charles Woods, right? Now, that's a guy that they say is probably the best cover 12 guy in their opinion. And when you right. look at Shadon, right, in his opinion, he's the best cover corner there is. And he, of course, came from Illinois State. And now we have, you know, transfer just here, Cox from North Dakota State. Uh, you know, you, you got, uh, Murray state, you got James Madison, you, you know, uh, it's, it, it's a lot of guys. I think it's like three guys and one guy is who's the guy from Colorado state. Ajay, right? Ajay. Ajay. Is that how you pronounce it? Man, a, I, I, I was so. going to butcher that for a long time. I'm glad you told me that. Cause I'll, I'll go well, back. I butchered Lee. I butchered Lee, I butchered Lee Coba's name forever until I finally figured it out. <laughs> no, I do because big red money, Mike Montoro had told me that one. So, oh, okay. Uh, but I, I tell you, I'm allowed to butcher names because that's just me being old and being hit in the head way too many times. Uh, okay, many times without a helmet. So, <laughs> but, and I want to say this, you know, is that these guys are long, athletic. We all know that. You know, right. Aubrey Burks looks really special as a sophomore out there at, at safety. And young, 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 right? But we got to see how they perform, man. we mm-hmm. got to see how they perform. Yeah. Dean Slovis is going to be a great, great test for them because Absolutely. you think about that offensive line. Now let's talk about our defensive line. And you look at that. And I, I see, you know, Dante. Now I don't know if you call this, but in the Wolfman's call, okay, I said that Dante Stills was going to be my big 12 defensive player of the year. I Hope call right. it. I'm doing it. I'm, I don't care what anybody says. I'm not afraid to make that call. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to make the most hay. Now, here's what he's got to have. He's got to have three other dudes, including the bandits, being able to go out there and cause havoc and cause problems for the offensive line Mm -hmm. so they can't just double-team him. Now, if if they can do that and put him one-on-one with an offensive lineman, Dante's going to win him. He's going to win most of those battles. But if they have it so they can handle everybody else with you know, one offensive lineman, then they can go ahead and put two, you know, maybe put a back on him, you know, put a tight end, put a tackle at the same time. When he goes out to the five technique, whatever it is, if they can go ahead and cause pressure in other areas so they can't just focus on Dante, Dante will be that guy. So he's got to have things happen for him. 
But I do believe that he's matured. I think he's ready. And again, I think he's hit that. I want to go to the NFL stage too. Mm -hmm. And so I got to go make my money now to make it later. Right. Absolutely. And I think I was excited when I saw Dante's press conference. I guess it was two days ago. And they were asking him about this game. And he said he's waited his entire life for this game. So I can tell that I can tell that kid is fired up to play this game. He said he's going to have a hard time keeping his emotions in check for the next for the rest of the week until the game starts. It's a legacy guy. It's a right. legacy. I mean, his dad said, "Hey, you got you hate those guys, even if you haven't played them in eleven years, you still hate those guys." And mm-hmm. and that's really a question that I have is how is this hatred? But I'm talking in between the lines now. Okay, this is a football game. It's gladiator football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this isn't life and death. This is gladiator football. But that mm-hmm. hatred on the field, not off the field, whatever, hatred on the field that they go at each other, how are they going to keep that? How are they going to – do they really feel that? Is it going to be a fake thing? Is it going to be real? Is it going to be legit on their own? Is it going to be a real backyard brawl? Or is it just going to be, well, it's just another team? And I really right. think – that they're going to feel and say, you know, these really are bragging rights. 105 years, man, 105 games. This will be 104 beforehand. I mean, this is big time. This is legends have been made in the backyard, bro. Legends made. Daryl Taylor blocking that punt. I mean, we could Mm -hmm. go down the line. Jeff Hosteller beating Pitt for the first time. I don't know how many years having an 80-yard two-minute drive and at the end of the game just Mm -hmm. so many great things uh i can remember me my times they're pummeling them i coached in four backyard brawls i've played in four backyard brawls i've watched ronnie play in four backyard brawls i've been around for a long time around west virginia here and watched a ton of backyard brawls and just because it was 11 years ago 11 Mm -hmm. years ago it seems like yesterday, man, to me. Yeah. As the blood starts to boil, and here comes another bloody knuckles reference. <laughs> okay, because that's what it is. And especially again, as I've already stated, I'm sure like 10 times, is that it's a battle of the trenches with this group. These yeah. two oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the matchups up front, I think anybody who knows about football can look at this game and say, that's where that's the matchups. Those are the matchups that are going to win the game right here. Because like you well, said earlier, it's their strength against our strength on both sides, right? So that's where the that's where my a lot of my attention is going to be on Thursday night when I'm watching this game is who's winning that battle up front, who's winning the box. Absolutely, oh, I love the box, man! It is so cool, and that is really all about forcing your will mm-hmm. as a unit. Now you mm-hmm. can only do what you can do against your guy, but if you get five, six guys, including a tight end, and you get them all doing the same thing, pulling on the same rope, working in the same mechanism, an offensive lineman. If you're a defensive lineman and you're causing chaos up there and all the different types of angles and rushes and techniques that the, our defense uses and you're just, just breaking, busting up that offensive line, causing separation. So what it means is one off of the centers on this level here and then the guards back here because the defensive line is causing chaos and separation. That's when you break through the backfield. That's when you get your TFLs. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're all one together and they're pushing like this, that's when you have a hard time doing it because they got you. Right. That makes sense. I, I, I appreciate your explanation of that because I'd never heard it explained that way. But that's it's, why it's, it's great to have separation, right? The, that's, that's why it's, that's why it's great to have somebody on here who's played the game at that level and can explain it from, from experience, unlike well, myself. And just um, the other thing, too, cool is it's just disruption, man. So right. That's what it is. You know what I mean? But go ahead. Right. No, that's cool. I was just going to ask you, you talked about uh, playing in the backyard brawl. What is your fondest memory from your days playing in the backyard brawl? Oh, <laughs> kicking uh, Chris Spindler's can. That <laughs> dude, I'll tell you what, I don't like him. I still, he played for the Lions for nine years. He does radio for the Lions now, I believe. And he actually left after his junior year and was drafted in the NFL by the Lions. I think he spent mm-hmm. his entire career there. But, you know, he came in, man, and and he's saying, Wolfley this, because, you know, Craig was a stealer at the time. My oldest brother mm-hmm. uh, was a stealer. And so the, the Wolfley was known up there in Pittsburgh. And obviously, it's the backyard brawl, right? So we're all familiar with each other. And he could just run in his mouth, and he just started to run his mouth in the game. And I'll tell you what, 
best way to shut up a dude that runs this like this. Okay. And now that's me on the other side. So I got to watch right. what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> the best way to shut that guy up is by me going whack, whack, whack. Okay. And then he goes, ooh, 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 ooh like this. And he, and he backs down. And right. I'll tell you what. So 1989, we tied the game. So that was kind of like kissing your mom, kissing your sister. Right. Right. Okay. It was like it, nothing there is a tie. Not yeah. quick. We were up 31 to nine going into the fourth quarter. But me personally, kicking the can. And he was really good. He was actually really good. Right. Well, it sounds like it. If he if he was drafted after his junior year. Yeah, but that was now that was a real bloody knuckles game. Mm -hmm. And he gave me all I could handle, in all honesty, all kidding aside. But we got at it. We got at it. There you go. Battled. He knew the wolf he knew who the wolfman was after that game, right? Yeah, I, I'm sure he still talks smack at me, but that's just because I wasn't there to uh to talk smack back at him. Ah there you go. <laughs> By the way, everybody, uh, as you can see at the top of the screen, I've got at Wolfley64 where you can find the Wolfman on Twitter if you want to reach out to him and interact with him, and also my Twitter handle at Coos206 as well. So reach out to us on Twitter if you want to. The highlights I've been hearing now about what Neil's been doing, mm -hmm. and in these facilities, man, they are just killing it. Yeah. They are just killing it, and, you know, Neil is a, he's smooth with the, the players. He's smooth with the family. You know, he can make Papa Bear, Mama Bear feel real good about being a Mountaineer. So, you know, I've seen it in action. I've seen him work and the staff. And uh, I'll tell you what, Neil Brown works really, really hard. He works really, really hard. And uh, I'm hoping that this season is a payoff for him because yeah. I know he's taken a lot of effort in trying to build this program. And I, I really believe that this guy wants to succeed at West Virginia, not anywhere else. Don't say he's not ever going to go anywhere else. But I think that he really, really wants to have success, not only for himself, for his staff, for his players, but also for Mountaineer Nation. Yeah, truth. I think so too. I the truth. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think we're in good hands with him going forward. Uh, you know, he's had some rough moments, but you know, that's you know, it, it is what it is. We got to leave the past behind us and look forward to what he's building, and uh, he's trying to build it his way, the way he wants to build it, and what he thinks is sustainable. For the future, in my opinion. You know, what's funny, honestly, is if Bobby Bowden can be hung in effigy, that anybody can as they make it, their mm -hmm. mistakes in their career, yep. as they continue to get better and better and better. And uh, if you can say it about Bobby Bowden, who couldn't you say it about? He's the perfect example of that. And he's the one. I mean, <laughs> right? the nation, the one that did it. Oh, man. Yes, I know. Gosh. That's one thing we all like to forget about, right? <laughs> you know it's good hey uh, by the way uh i wanted to let you know is that every thursday i'm doing a show called pig skin stew on espn radio up mm -hmm. there okay in, in uh pittsburgh with uh jay paternal uh tom bradley who was coaching at wvu right and, right and was coaching penn state for he recruited me at penn state in 1986 that's how old oh, Strapper yeah? is yeah and we have uh, a thing where we got a guy from Pitt and a guy from penn state that we're doing this rep it's not a penn state show awesome. with Totally. Um, I'm sure they're going to try, try to influence a little bit that way, but I'm there battling for the Mountaineers. So awesome. uh, every Thursday, it's at 970 ESPN, 104. I think we get it down here in West Virginia. Uh, not positive, but anyways, I thought I'd throw that plug. Oh, I yeah. forgot. I got to get another plug in here. And I'm yeah. just busy, busy, busy. Hey, that's, that's what I want you to do. That was actually <laughs> what I was going to ask you to do next. So you're perfect, <laughs> perfect timing. I have a tendency just to piss people off. Hey, you're not gonna piss me off, man. Oh, here want, we go. I just, I just want you to roll with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, rolling, I'm easy. To, I'm easy to get along with. All right. So KCK, we just did today. We're just gonna start doing a a pregame segment on Channel Five. It was at WDTV. Okay, you're not around here, are you? This is North Central West Virginia. I'm in the southern part of the state. Oh, uh, okay. There he goes. But it's the the. But Mount a lot of my viewers are so so. Yeah, so go for it. What's that? A lot of my viewers are so they probably okay, interested so, in here. The Mountaineer World Kickoff Show presented by Benny's Boot Hill. It's going to air Thursdays, 6 to 7 on Channel 5. I guess we're going to do that every week. I just did a segment with her today. Uh, a young gal there that's a, a pretty pretty good reporter there. So, again, it'll be a good breakdown. Hey, it's me breaking it down, talking about it, talking about the backyard brawl, a little bit of an early Christmas present in September, a little bit of a Christmas feast you know, you get out there, you got the big old Christmas dinner, you got all that good stuff, you mashed potatoes, you know, you get 
cranberries out there. And you start eating all oh, the sweet mashed potatoes. And you get oh, a little bit of turkey meat here. And you got a ham. Yeah, give, me, give me a slice of that ham, honey, over there. And we'll go over there. And there's a papa bear right here. And we're eating it. And guess what? I'm thinking it's Christmas, man. But no, it's the pit backyard brawl. It's September 1st. So Christmas has come early. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And I cannot wait. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I've, I've had butterflies in my stomach since Monday. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, Wolfman, everybody, don't forget, check him out on Twitter, interact with him. Uh, check out Wolfman's call on, on YouTube and on I think he's on Facebook as well. We go, yeah, we go Facebook Live. We just live stream it all, man, and yeah. Twitter. I might at Wolfly64, but among okay. legends pregame is going to be on that. Yes. Uh, the Wolfman's call is me just calling it out, saying what I want to say. But you know what I want, though, Kuzma? I want you guys to all just say, hey, do you, do you agree with that or don't agree with that? I don't yeah. care. I, you know what? I want to talk with people about educating everybody in football, including myself. Right. <laughs> There's things I can learn. Even though I've been a coach all these years and player, whatever, broadcaster, I can learn a lot myself. So I, I have nobody different. As I said, I've had a lot of wrong answers in my life. Hey, I've been doing this. I've only been doing this a year now, and I learned really quick. You're not going to make everybody happy, and not everybody's going to agree with you. And you got to, and you, and you have to be okay with that, because if you're not, you're not going to last very long. You better have some thick skin, brother. Absolutely, like Golden Blue Dude <laughs> says, thick skin, check. <laughs> I like Golden Blue Dude. I do he too. He makes me laugh. He makes me laugh. You know, but yeah. listen, where are the shades? I need. I should have worn my shades out here. Uh, <laughs> I, I love Golden Blue Dude, man. Get the shades too. on there, and I love when he starts going off. <laughs> the kills is one, two, three, four. I mean, I can't even think that fast. I can't either. He loses me, man. I'm like, my brain doesn't work that fast. I'm not sure how he even talks that fast, to be honest. <laughs> if I try to talk that fast, I'd be stumbling all over my words and everything else. Well, you're doing, you're growing, man, aren't you? Yeah, I'm growing oh, pretty Jimmy good. Foster told me that you're like the number two fastest growing in, in like the country or something. I don't know about the country now, but yeah, he. Joey's probably talking me up a little bit, but now I, I'm, I've grown pretty good. I'm up to 3,300 subs in a year. So, uh, wow. Well, listen, man, you just keep rocking and rolling and doing your thing. Okay. And throw you. out there a tweet every now and then that I can correct you at. I'll keep doing it. Hey, I'm okay with that. Like I said, <laughs> I'm learning, man. I'm learning, brother. I don't mind learning something new every day. <laughs> me neither, man. It's cool. Hey, Wolfman, everybody check out Mountaineer Legends pregame on Thursday, 2 o'clock p.m., right, Wolfman? Yep. 2 o'clock. On his, on his Twitter, on his Facebook, on YouTube at Mountaineer Legends. Go subscribe to the channel. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description box. Be a great way to get fired up for the game as you're tailgating, as you're cooking your chicken wings, whatever it is you're doing on Thursday. Have that on, listen to it, and listen to all these great legends talking about their days with WVU, reminiscing, talking smack about Pitt, talking smack to each other probably, whatever it is they're going to do. It's going to be a fun time. Hey, just remember one thing, Coos. We never let facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, everybody. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. And Wolfman, thanks again for uh, for hopping on. And let's go Mountaineers. Let's go Mountaineers.